All righty. Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in today. We have a super brief lecture on substance use and abuse. And rather than just kind of rattling off a bunch of different drugs and substances to you, I am going to direct you to the NIH governmental resource so you can research a couple of substances on your own that you find interesting. But we will talk about addiction what it is and what are some prevailing theories of why it happens and then these are some of the drugs I'm going to have you look into alcohol tobacco e-cigarettes caffeine etc you can choose the other ones that you want to look at um, like amphetamines like um, opiates and more and then we'll look at some resources for healing drug addiction so brief lecture like I said so this theory of addiction is posed by Gabor Mate, and he is an author and psychologist who specializes in addiction research and mental health issues, and he has a really unique view of substance use issues. So he writes that addiction is manifested in any behavior that a person craves, finds temporary relief or pleasure in, but suffers negative consequences as a result of, and yet has difficulty giving up. In brief, craving, relief, pleasure, suffering, impaired control. So these are good hallmarks or characteristics of addiction. Something we crave, we get temporary pleasure from or relief from our suffering, and yet there are negative outcomes that result from this, and despite them, we still can't give this up. So I invite you to think about your own life and your own addictions. Um, what kinds of things would classify as addictions for you? And this doesn't just have to be something like alcohol or marijuana. Um, it could be something like video gaming or like scrolling through your Instagram feed or like food or shopping. Anything that you crave doing you find temporary pleasure from, but ultimately get negative consequences, negative outcomes from, and are, are having a hard time giving up. So this is a helpful definition for us in terms of addiction, and it really does span more than just drugs and alcohol. While this section is on drugs and alcohol, I do want you to think of it beyond that. Drugs and alcohol are commonly things that people can be addicted to, but of course not the only ones. So this is a little video that he has on the question that we can ask around addiction when we are suffering to better understand the underlying causes. All the substances of abuse, whether they're opiates or cocaine or anything else, they're actually painkillers. Some of them specifically are painkillers. But physical pain and emotional pain, the suffering is experienced in the same part of the brain. So when people suffer emotional rejection, the same part of the brain will light up as if you stuck them with a knife. The Neckhart told us this very nicely, uh, that addictions begin with pain and end with pain. So that all the addictions are attempts to soothe the pain. So when I work with addictions, the first question is always not why the addiction, but why the pain. And uh, what you find is emotional loss or trauma. In the case of the severe addicts, as in the downtown East Side here, there were every single one of them traumatized. There's no women walking the streets here who had not been sexually abused, not even by accident. But, but, but you know, whether it's a sex addiction or internet or, or, or um, relationship or shopping or work addiction, these are all attempts to get away from distress. Keith Richards, the Rolling Stone guitarist, said, uh, who used to have a severe heroin habit, as you know. He said that all the contortions we go through just not to be ourselves for a few hours. Or why would somebody not want to be themselves? Because they're in too much distress and too much pain. So I don't care what they tell you about genetics or any of that choices or any of that nonsense. It's always about pain. Well, the Tibetan Book of Living and Dying, uh, it's got a wonderful line in it. Whatever you do, don't try and escape from your pain, but be with it. Because the, the, the attempt to escape from pain is what creates more pain. And that's the reality with addiction. But the question is, how can people with their pain? Well, only if they sense some compassion. 
somebody. So as another teacher says, only when compassion is present will people allow themselves to see the truth. So addicted people need a, a compassionate present which will permit them to experience their pain without having to run away from it. And all the attempts to run away, it's like another teacher says, the surest way to go to hell is to try to run away from hell. So you've got to be with that pain. You just have to be with it, but you have to have some support. And, and we live in a society that one way or the other is always about instant relief, quick satisfaction, distraction. In other words, we live in a culture that is based on both economically and, and psychologically on not uh, supporting people to be with themselves. So it's always the quick getaway. So it's very difficult to deal with addictions in a society. But yeah, it is a matter of, at some point, finding a way of being with your pain so that you can actually get to know what it's really all about. So why do I show this video is the question I hope you're wondering right now. And perhaps it is triggering a lot or bringing up a lot for you. And I show it for a variety of reasons. One is to humanize addiction and to help us build some empathy for it. Because many, many people deal with addiction in one form or another, whether that is to drugs or alcohol or more acceptable addictions like work or food. Um, Many of us deal with addiction in one way or the other. And a lot of times it's stigmatized or people are not given support or are even um, met with disdain or looked down upon because they're struggling with these substances. And I think it's a very human reaction to suffering. And as he says in the video, we have a hard time being with our pain in the U.S. and in many other cultures and, and countries, and we aren't often taught a lot of strategies to do that. So if you think back to our first couple sections on mental health and stress and psychology, hopefully there are some tools there, some resources that you can use to better understand how you're feeling and be with your pain. Um, because I do think that that's the way out for ourselves and for other people who are suffering. If we can offer them some compassion and empathy and understand that nobody is addicted to drugs or addicted to anything for no good reason. Nobody wants to um, experience the negative consequences and watch their lives fall apart this way. They're doing it because at the time it's the best way that they know how to cope. So it doesn't mean that addictions aren't bad and that we shouldn't work to remedy them. Uh, it just means that we need to have a little human compassion and understanding when looking at them and really examine our own lives and see where do our addictions lie and what is it that we're trying to get away from. Here are some additional uh, symptoms or things to note with addiction that that is similar to what Gabor Mate said, but it's kind of a cycle of addiction. So one is tolerance. We build up a tolerance for this substance, meaning that we need it in regular doses to feel the effects from it. And oftentimes this is in increasing doses, especially when we talk about drugs. Oftentimes people need more and more of them to get the positive effects they're getting from them. And ultimately we experience feelings of withdrawal, whether that's psychological or physiological withdrawal when we don't use that substance. So physiological could be things like nausea, vomiting, tremor, tremors, um, temperature issues, etc. Psychological withdrawal could just mean extreme anxiety or emotions. And again, these can happen with things like drugs or alcohol or sex or gambling, etc. We feel eventually a loss of control around the substance. So we are not, we are no longer in control of whether we engage this substance or not, or, or we feel like we're not. And this leads to an inability to stop which has negative impacts on the rest of our life. So we might neglect things like work or school or relationships or hygiene or paying the bills or whatever. But these are the negative consequences that he speaks of. And if the addiction persists, we continue use despite obvious evidence of harm. So this is sort of the cycle of addiction. And breaking it is a challenging thing to do. 
we'll, we'll talk about some strategies or some resources rather in a minute, but um, having empathy and compassion for yourself or the people dealing with it is incredibly important. Um, I like this, this picture here, heal the root, heal the tree, addiction recovery. So this goes back to Gabor Mate's idea that addiction is about pain and suffering and what's lying underneath, abuse, death, family history, divorce, emotional disorders, stress, job loss, etc. All of these things triggering our addictions and our needs to cope. And rather than just trying to um, counter those drives or substitute them with other substances or behaviors or just disengage with the substance, person, place, material thing, rather than just trying to deal with the outcomes of our pain and suffering, we really do have to get to the root cause of what's what's promoting this unhealthy behavior in the first place. Um, and this is a, this picture here is really interesting. Some of the classical studies done on addiction looked at rats and they would put rats in a cage and give them access to two different solutions, one with sugar water and one with cocaine. And they would see what they would do and they found that these rats in these cages by themselves would press the cocaine lever to get a hit of cocaine repeatedly until they died. So this is a very severe example of, um, of an addiction leading to negative consequences, but persisting in the behavior regardless. And we do know that this happens with humans as well. Interestingly though, researchers developed an another study called where, where they made something called like a rat park. And in this cage, rather than the rats being isolated and by themselves with nothing else to do, they had multiple rats, so they had friends, and they had mazes, and they had wheels, and they had all these activities and things for the rats to do. So the rats were engaged, the rats were socially supported, and then they put them in the same setting where they had the option to hit the cocaine, and the rats would do so initially, but then they would stop and they wouldn't keep hitting the cocaine until they died like the isolated, unengaged rats did. And so these research studies are really pivotal, suggesting that it's not just this chemical addiction in the brain that causes us to, to become addicted to drugs or other substances. It is the absence of things in our life, the absence of connection, which is a fundamental human need, the absence of engagement, which is a fundamental human need. And so if we're trying to deal with our own addictions, prevent against addictions, or help other people with addictions, we know that empathy, connection, and engagement are key. So what I'm going to ask you to do after this, rather than just rattle through a bunch of different drugs and tell you about their side effects and symptoms and yada yada, I am going to have you go to the NIH Commonly Abused Drug charts website. So it looks like this. And I have the link right below the link for this video on our module. And you can scroll through whichever ones you're most interested in. So let's say MDMA. It's going to tell you what it's called, common forms, how it's taken, and then some of the long-term and short-term effects and withdrawal symptoms for this, as well as treatment options, medication options. So I want you to look through at least three of these, if not more, what you're interested in, to kind of gain some understanding of these different substances, their long-term effects, and common methods for quitting. And in your next discussion board, I'll ask you to talk about the three that you looked into. And finally, if you or somebody that you know is dealing with addiction, here is a website that has a list of resources in San Diego, up to sd.org backslash resources backslash addiction dash substance dash use. So they have some hotlines to call for help, free hotlines, San Diego crisis line, tips for getting treatment, behavioral health care network here, as well as some groups, AA, Narcotics Anonymous, family groups, partnership for drug-free kids, etc. So these are just some resources that are here in San Diego for you. Again, quitting is hard for a lot of people. And so getting as many resources, as much family and friend support as possible is really, really crucial and key. So that is it. Quick lecture, like I said today, on understanding addiction, 
um, what underlies it. I'm going to ask that you spend some time looking through this website. And then in your next, show you discussion board, I'm going to ask you to look at your addictions. So we talk about what it is. I'm going to ask you to consider what might you be addicted to? Things, people, places, behaviors. What benefits do you get from this addiction, i.e., why do you continue to do it? What ways does it negatively impact your life, i.e., what are the consequences? And then how do you want to move forward with this? And it's okay if you're not ready to yet take one of these steps, but brainstorming can be a step. And then finally, I want you to list the three substances that you researched on the NIH website and tell us about the short and long-term consequences. So that is it for today. I hope you are well, and we'll chat with you all soon.